All right, continuing our previous discussion on decision tree learning algorithm, these are the following questions that may arise in your mind, so we'll tackle them one by one. So the first and the most important question is how to choose the best attribute to split. At each and every point, you have to make a decision on which attribute to choose to split and how to choose that. When to declare a particular node as a leaf node. What types of trees are generally preferable? Smaller, preferable, or larger, or balanced? If a leaf node is impure, what should we do? So we discussed one stopping criterion where we declared a node as a leaf node if it is pure, if it has only all instances belonging to either the positive class or the negative class. But what if it has not achieved that state of purity and has both positive and negative classes? Should we keep splitting or should we decide to mark that node as a leaf node at some point um, rather than splitting it again and again? What if some attribute value is missing? What if some attribute um, you're splitting on does not have a value recorded for a data instance, how can you still successfully employ this algorithm to, to work for such data instances? The first and foremost question is what we will answer first, choosing the best attribute. So here, um, keep in mind that we prefer simpler, smaller trees always because remember Occam's razor, the simplest model that explains the data should be preferred. And each node divides the data into subsets and the heuristic intuitively should confirm to what makes each subset of data as pure as possible, right? So as pure, when I say pure, I mean the data instances are either from the negative class or from the positive class and not having both negative and positive. So as much as possible, we want to make the subsets pure as we go down the tree. And finally, we reach the leaf node where uh, the hope is that it will be pure and have only instances corresponding to the negative class or the positive class. All right, so the most popular metric used for Splitting the data is the information gain heuristic. So it's very simple. It's defined as follows. It uses entropy, which is a measure of impurity. So the measure is chosen because it aligns with what we want. We want to create more purity in the subsets. And for that, we want to measure the impurity and we want to reduce that. So gain is defined intuitively. So I'm going to, before we go into the equation, I want to give you a sense of what gain is capturing. It captures the current impurity given by the entropy and it subtracts the new impurity. The new impurity is the expected impurity if you split on the attribute chosen. So for each attribute, you calculate the gain using current impurity minus the new impurity if that attribute is chosen as attribute to split. And if the reduction in impurity is the greatest for an attribute, then the gain is greater for that attribute and that attribute should be chosen. So gain S comma A, so now going to the equation, gain S comma A is equal to H of S minus sigma over v belong to all values in attribute a, p of v times h of sp. So what does that mean? Well, define the symbols first. s is your subset of data that you are passing to that branch. So initially to the root node, s would be all the data instances. And as you go further in into the tree, we saw that we have specific subsets passed to the grow tree column. So S would be that, that big set of data that is passed to your grow tree column. And A is the attribute that you want to choose. So 
for each attribute a that is left to choose what we do is we calculate the expected entropy so this is now the term on the right so we calculate the expected entropy by multiplying h of s v which is h of s where value of a is equal to the small v so that is so let's say if it is 0 or 1 then if a we get all data instances where a equal to 0 and that will be one set and then we multiply that with probability of that value equal to 0 a equal to 0 occurring in the data set and that would be your expected entropy on the right and h of s is entropy of the entire data set that you're passing on to the group recall okay so i know this is a lot to take in so we are going to now look at an example to understand this better that would be the next lecture